YouTube up here again with another portable power bank slash inverter. So we're going to test this bad boy. We're going to hook some light bulbs up to it and we're going to try to uh, blow it up. And then if we can't, or if we do, we're going to take it apart. So let's see what we got. Specs for you guys. Ow. Okay. So you guys can look at it with me. So capacity, it is 60,000 60, milliamps or 20, 222 watt hours. And recharge input is 15 volts at 2.4 amps or solar panel charging, which you can do with this apparently. Uh, 12 to 25 volts at 2.4 amps. Charge time is about seven hours. So we got the power bank. Neat, neat little handle. These are all the accessories. So this thing is uh, pretty heavy. And I imagine it's probably gonna have the same battery style that was in that PAL key one I tested. So let's get into the accessories they send you, which is supposedly a cigarette lighter adapter so there's that so you can charge that cigarette water. and it looks like the same yep the same AC adapter you get from power key and a 12 volt adapter which goes out probably here Ooh, those are toy oh. So you got your input here, which I'll straighten you guys up. USB type C, two USB ports, input for your solar, and then output 12 volts. And I'll go ahead and put these over to the side. We're not gonna need those where we're going. Maybe, might need them, but let's see. If you can charge, it looks like when it charges. So input. Bop. What do we got? Oh wow. So it actually does have a watt meter. Here's the watt meter running. And it says we currently have 30 watts going into it. So that's pretty clean. I like that. It's pretty neat. And it looks like we're, it doesn't say state of charge yet, but I'll double check. We got two bars on the battery. So let's see what we got for USB power. Make sure they're actually 3.0. Turn down the good old tester here and plug her in. Move that over here. Oh man, putting a little stretch on the setup here. Oh, okay, nothing yet. So I imagine I have to turn it on. Turn it on. Five bolts. And then let's turn this up and pushing it up to three amps. 3.1. Bop. It does handle it. And this thing actually says. That one says it's got 15 watts coming out of it. This one says. 18 watts coming out of the USB. So, what we'll do is we'll cut this off because we don't need it anymore. And move on to testing the AC. Well, you know, power. 120. So let's go ahead and check that. So we're plugged into the oscilloscope. Now let's see what we got. Okay. So am I supposed to do that and then turn on AC. Ah, there we go. So yeah, modified sound wave. And by the way, you gotta turn it on first before you can turn on the AC. <laughs> we'll test it with a LARP verb. See what we got. AC off. The test rig is plugged in. Now we're gonna see if this thing puts out. Some of the cheap inverters weren't working before, so let's see. Holy crap. Alright, so she is. She is working. 
and we got 70 watts on her so I'll turn it up until uh, the unit actually cuts it out this is by far probably well I say by far I tested one other one this thing started right away though but it is modified sine wave not it's putting on some heat the inverter is limited to 160 watts 165 but it's working and that bad boy is bright so it is working pretty good this thing is nice compared to that pow key one this thing i mean well the pow key one was pure sine wave so this one is modified sine wave so cheap cheaper to make a modified sine wave a little overpowered so you ain't gonna have a problem with startup wattage but this thing pretty nice it's working pretty good can't use it for like your medical devices and stuff like that which would suck the pow key one most likely you could i don't think anything uh medical wise is going to pull over uh 100 150 watts but i could be wrong um let me know in the comments <laughs> but we'll turn this off Oop. and let's start taking this thing apart we're going to start taking this thing apart let's start with little rubber booties on the bottom because that was kind of the thing on the last one that everything was assembled from the bottom, which would be a flathead. Get these off. Yep. So these are coming off of here. So rubber boots are off. Let's see what kind of screws we got in the bottom of this thing. Wow. Okay. And that goes all the way to the top. I'm gonna get these screws out of here. All right, so all screws are out. Let's see, oh, okay. Wow, that's actually nifty. And look at that. This thing is freaking awesome inside. I like it. So you have your MOSFETs, you got these little modules here on the side, which look like they're just held in by sliding them in there. There's probably a bolt on the bottom, but everything is in there like a module. It is nice. Main battery connects to the board right here. So this thing is clean. I'll give you a tour real quick. So this thing is really nice inside. Organized very well. Management wise, it's actually pretty clean. It's it's pretty good. They got a decent sized gauge wire for the battery. So yeah, let's take let's dig deeper into this thing. Start taking boards out of it and get to that battery pack down there. See if it's got a BMS, unlike uh, your pow key unit. So let's see. So we got to work on getting the boards out of here. So that's for the AC power, guarantee it. Unplug that. AC power, battery power, it almost looks like that whole thing just comes out of there in one go. So what I'm going to do, since I can do that, is I do glue that one in there for the LED, so they have some really soft wire for that. So I guess, I mean, in a way they do have a BMS in this thing. It looks like they're doing it the same way as the other one. So they're basically monitoring the cells on either side. So they got 
of course, this one kind of explains it a little bit more than the PAL key unit. So you got 7-4 and you got 3-6 um, right here. So it's actually monitoring the voltages there. So in actuality, it actually is monitoring all three sections of the battery. Now, if it's balancing them, I'm not really sure. I imagine it is. It could be with these little leads right here. I'm not right sure. So we'll get this unplugged. Which they do use a decent connector for the battery. Wow, this thing is nuts inside. I don't like the fact that it's uh, all bent over, but we'll see once we get it out of there. This is for the DMS. It does unplug pretty easily. So, which I don't know why I unplugged that. <laughs> I do need to unplug this. And this one has a 30 amp fuse for the inverter. Alright, so that's unplugged. So technically now I can take the battery out of it. So I'll unscrew all the screws for that and pull the battery and uh inverter out of it. So there's the inverter board and all its magic and this neat little tray that they uh, organize it in there. Man, this thing is like modular as hell. Like everything can be replaced in a decent amount of time and I'm guaranteeing that's what holds the battery in. Yep, that's exactly what they did, exactly like the PAL key. Inverter, our power bank. So I got the inverter board out, now you got access to the battery. But they glued the battery to the bottom of the case. So I can't really get into the bottom. And obviously there's nothing down here on the bottom to get to it. And I'm not going to rip this battery out of here because I really want to uh, actually use this thing. So I'm gonna leave it be. It does appear to be stacked in a 3S configuration. So just like the PAL key one, they do the BMS the same way, which is plugged into the almost looks identical board to the PAL key. So when it comes to inverters, that's uh, pretty much what you get. The only difference between the PAL key is it did look like it had more um, circuits on it, mainly because it was uh, pure sine wave. So I'm actually going to put this thing back together because I really want to use it and test it in numerous situations. But I really want to hook a solar panel up to it along with that PAL key unit and see how good they do in a solar charge situation. So well, let me slap this thing back together and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, like and subscribe. And have good rest of your weekend oh and if you're a fan please comment boop boop